Hello everyone and welcome to FunnelToTunnel.com. I received a lot of requests for guidance on filling up NCB form required for crane loading and today we will discuss the same. NCB form stands for National Cargo Bureau form required to be completed by all vessels loading crane cargo in the US ports. The form is completed by chief officer and countersigned by the master. And finally, the form is signed by the NCB surveyor after checking all the details. NCB surveyor checks for the accuracy of the information by comparing it with values obtained from the approved low decator reports. This is done to fulfill the requirements of the International Grain Code whereby the ship shall satisfy the grain stability criteria during all stages of the voyage and also before the start of the voyage. This is done to ensure due diligence at the terminal part that the ship was loaded with grain and trimmed in accordance with the requirements of the International Grain Code. So today we will discuss the NCB form in detail but before going further I request you to download the following documents for the ease of understanding. You have to download the NCB form, you have to download the ship's departure condition which we are taking into account and the ship's arrival condition which we are taking into account. The link of all three are given in the description below so you can download the documents from there. So I have taken only two conditions here that is departure loading port and arrival discharge port. In case the vessel is calling any bunkering port or multiple discharge ports you have to calculate the intermediate condition as well. However for the sake of simplicity I have kept only two ports. Importance is laid on understanding the concept. The reason why I want you to download the documents is because you can follow up the instructions comfortably by referring to the appropriate document. In case you are watching this video on your mobile phone, I would request you to switch to laptop, desktop or tablet for a better user experience. Simply because switching between documents would be much easier that way. Alright, let's begin. First thing first, the NCB form is filled up using the following sources of data. Number 1. Ship Particulars Number 2. Capacity Plan and General Arrangement Plan Number 3. Grain Stability Booklet Grain Loading Manual Number 4. Loadicator Reports And last, Charter Party Details or Voyage Orders So most of the form is completed using the above. So keep the above items handy. Alright, let us have a quick glance how an NCB form looks like. So this is the first page of uh, NCB form whereby you can see that uh, a lot of general particulars are asked which can be filled up using your grain stability booklet and ship particulars. After that uh, you will be having uh, void specific data to be filled such as loading ports, bunkering port and the discharge port. What is the steaming distance you are uh, supposed to do for the whole of the voyage and also the miles per day which uh, as which has in rough estimate as to how many miles per day will the ship be cruising also the time taken for whole of the voyage also you have to mention the daily consumption of fuel diesel and water and the applicable uh, load line to which the vessel is loading to in this case in this particular case we are going by the summer load line so we will be filling this column only Going ahead, you have to mention the freshwater lines and uh, TPC values. So calculation is normally prepared by the chief officer. So you have to put his name as well as uh, uh, he has to sign it. So he has to put his name and he has to sign it. On the right hand side, the report has to be signed by the master as well as the NCB surveyor after ensuring that everything is in order. Also you have to supplement the original stability calculation and the grain arrangement plan which is the stowage plan. Coming on to page number 2 that is the part 1. Here you have to give the breakup of the, the cargo distribution on your ship which means you have to write down the number of holes also the cargo. Uh, in we are carrying only wheat we are not carrying 2 or 3 grades of grain. So like I said for the sake of simplicity we are taking up a uh, only one grade example okay and then we have to mention the stowage factor uh, and 
in the next column you have to mention the grain cubics the total grain cubics of the hole which you can get easily from the ship particulars and the used one which is how much cubics of the hole the grain is occupying at the time of departure then finally the weight and the kg of each hole followed by the moment that is moment generated by it's not the grain healing moment it's the moment which is generated by the cargo compartment not by the uh, grain so grain healing moment is a different concept and we'll and, uh, and it is mentioned in a different section and we will discuss it later followed by and the bottom of this page number two you can see the calculation is prepared in metric units we are using the metric units normally most of the booklets are given metric units but just in case you have to be very sure if it is in English units you have to take this English units because a US utilizes a different system but this booklet utilizes the metric units that is the grain and the stream and stability booklet on board the ship then comes you have to total all the cargo uh, you have to put the light ship and the constant followed by the moment uh, total moment of this column and then you have to state the total figure over here followed by uh, the bottom page shows a ship shape here you have to uh, devise a rough stowage plan uh, like you do on the ship and you have to show all the compartments and the engine spaces and tween decks if you have got and all the other holes and also the, what is the condition of the hole let's say for example number one is full or slack or trimmed or untrimmed everything you have to write it down okay so we will show you how it is done with a filled form for sure but right now we are just going through quickly how the NCB form looks like okay part number two that is page three of uh, NCB form uh, is very important section here you have to uh, basically mention all the tank compartments carrying liquid uh, and this liquid can be of any type it could be of oil it could be um, water or it could be gray water it could be any other type of liquid but whatever tank which is capable of generating uh, free surface moment uh, that is what you have to mention over here S now this page is actually divided into three sections which is departure intermediate and arrival so if you look at the top four lines of this page it says that the intermediate section must be completed if the arrival section shows ballast that is not listed in the departure section and the intermediate condition is immediately before ballasting and must include the effect of free surface but not the effect of added weight so additional fuel taken after departure must be shown in the intermediate section in the same manner as ballast so what they want to say is that uh, you have to fill up intermediate section only when you are doing any change of ballast like you are taking some ballast or you are deballasting some tanks or you are receiving bunkers which means that if there is a change in the free surface moment during any point of the voyage you have to mention it in the intermediate section but in present case we are not dealing with any such issue we are just doing a departure port and a rival port we are not uh, taking any bunkers in between neither we are doing any ballasting or deballasting so we will not be filling up this section but as a matter of fact and what you should know is that if you are calling any intermediate port it could be changing the ballast quantity of your tank uh, and there could be change in the fuel oil quantity after bunkers so obviously if you start from departure port and you're not taking any bunkers at arrival the bunker quantity will be different but once you are taking bunker uh, the free surface moment values changes a lot so that is what the NCB form wants you to put in but in this case we will not be uh, filling up the intermediate section because we are not taking any bunkers and we are not doing any deballasting or ballasting on our way so the second section or the bottom page uh, you can see that the total of all the weight of the liquids also the free surface moment which is generated by them uh, followed by uh, all the three conditions which is departure uh, intermediate and uh, arrival what they want to really uh, achieve from this section is to get your departure GM and the intermediate GM and the arrival GM basically they want to know that at every point of time your the vessel's GM is higher than 0.3 which is a requisite for ships carrying grain as per the stability criteria so that is what they want to know through this section they want to uh, have an idea about your kg they want to have uh, an idea about the 
free surface moment and the free surface correction which is being uh, generated by or induced by the tanks uh, so this is what will help them to arrive at what is the corrected gm and what is the required gm and they can compare that at all stages of the voyage gm is the signature of any vessel's stability so uh, gm shows that how much stable the vessel is so this is what the section intends to do coming on to page number four or four which is the last page of the ncb form here we need to show the healing moment calculation of the cargo compartments now this healing moment calculation is the healing moment which is generated by the grain which is loaded in the uh, cargo compartments the as you know we have discussed it previously in our blogs as well as in the videos that grain in itself has got a hazard of shifting why the grain shifts because it has got little pockets of air in between and uh, that only results in shifting of the grain and uh, the grain shifts easily so and that is the reason why all the compartments they say must be filled uh, fully as well as the cargo should be trimmed when we say it is trimmed it means that all the pockets uh, should be completely filled or uh, leveled uh, upon in that case uh, the grain will will be having very slight chances of moving here and there and because of this movement in in a in a case where the grain shifts it affects it generates a healing moment on the ship and because this whole mass of or whole volume of the grain is shifting to one or the other side this induces a healing moment into the ship which causes the ship to heal at a certain angle now this if not controlled in time and if you have not taken precautions before could lead to a vessel healing beyond a certain limit which might result in capsizing of the ship and that is where it is important for you to uh, trim the grain cargo properly and also to fill up the maximum number of compartments this part you can see that what the ncb forms want you to show is the complete stability summary of the ship whereby your displacement values at the departure intermediate and arrival condition also the gm the grain healing moment and the maximum allow allowable grain healing moment followed by the departure intermediate and arrival condition in the last part basically the stability summary is divided into two parts a for the vessel which are approved under certain regulations and b for the ships uh, which are specially suitable for carriage of grain so this is what the ncb forms looks like it is a very simple form and you should keep handy the various sources of information from you, where you will be picking up values and inserting into this form let us also quickly go through the departure condition which you have already downloaded i assume uh, this is how a uh, loadicator condition printout looks like and we are taking into account here the departure condition and we have taken a liberty of keeping the bunkers as full so all the bank bunker tanks are 96 percent and uh, uh, the cargo holds are full except cargo hole number three which is at 59 percent so it is generating a certain number of uh, grain healing moments that means and uh, I have taken this liberty also that I have not kept any ballast on board. Um, I have shown it to be nil. And this is what a very important point is. As a matter of fact, for filling up uh, the uh, the ballast, uh, the filling up the NCB form, normally you should show that nil moments are being generated by the ballast water. Because uh, even if uh, this is very unrealistic that uh, all the ballast water is pumped out, although every tank will have certain quantity of ballast water let's say about two tons three tons five tons or maybe even ten tons but compared to the uh, the size of the tank those five seven ten tons will not be having much of a free surface uh, effect uh, on the whole ship so that is also a very realistic thing so in that case you can always neglect that small quantity of water obviously that will always be used when you're carrying out the draft survey that's a different story because that there you should be concerned about the the amount of uh, the cargo because if you're showing wrong ballast your quantity of cargo may differ but uh, just for the sake of uh, taking into account the stability um, calculations and the stability uh, results you can always uh, neglect the uh, quantity of the ballast water but it should be close to nil it's, it's it should not be like that you have carried certain quantity of water and then you're showing it nil no like i said like five to eight to ten tons is something which uh, 
it's it's a very negligible quantity of uh, ballast water in any tank which can generate any significant amount of free surface moment so you can get away with that all right and uh, let's move on uh, this is how a typical lubricator printout looks like over here i want to uh, tell you also the importance of ensuring that your lubricator results are pretty much accurate uh, and that is what the whole uh, point of having an approved lubricator on board is so normally every chief officer is testing the lubricators uh, and lubricator uh, with the approved test loading conditions uh, on board uh, every month and uh, but most of the times i have found out the chief officers are just taking a print out signing it and filing it that is not the correct way of uh, actually testing the lubricator you should be really confident about the results being provided by your lubricator because if you're not testing out your lubricators in the most proper way you are bound to get errors which might result in the ship's actual stability way different from what the lubricator is showing and as far as the grain stability booklet goes you should always be familiar with the procedure of calculating the grain healing moments the volumetric healing moments the maximum allowable moments uh, different shipyards have got different types of booklets some shipyards show and give the data in a very tabular format while some shipyards give it in a graphical format you should be aware of what kind of grain stability booklet you have on board and you should be familiar with the procedure if you can compare that the results from the grain stability booklet when you're doing a manual calculation for that matter and the lubricator results are same and similar and you have tested the lubricator to an extent where you can say and you, you can be sure about your lubricator results then i think the best way to do is that just pick up the lubricator report and fill up the ncb form that's and i have found a lot of people doing it that way because they are, they know that the lubricators are working fine all right coming back to the lubricator report uh, you can see that the then the bottom section also it is showing the various uh, compartments of hold and also the weight of the hold weight of cargo in the hold and also the volume uh, of the grain cargo which is loaded in each hold in this departure condition followed by the moment that is a grain healing moment being generated by each hold for obvious reason the maximum grain healing moment is generated by cargo hold number 3 because a cargo hold number 3 is not full it is only about 59% full so it is generating the maximum healing moment while rest of the holes are generating very slight amount of healing moments because they are generally full okay so also the lubricator report shows you that allowable green healing moment is for this condition that is for the current displacement and the current kg of the ship is 58937 while the total moment being generated is 32921 so in itself you can very well say that the uh, the condition is being satisfied and we are fit to carry this this uh, voyage on with this distribution of cargo so so that is how a lubricator printout uh, shows you the details that's what i want to tell you followed by a very important last page that shows the IMO grain stability now this is not a full lubricator printout um, lubricator printout consists of many many pages it because it consists of a lot of data as well as other diagrams but for the sake of convenience i have taken up only three pages which is or which will be required to fill up the ncb form but this page is very important from the lubricator printout it is the ammo grain stability it shows you whether the vessel is uh, complying with the grain stability criteria or not so in this case you can see that everything is good the judgment is good and the vessel is complying with the criteria you can also also see that the values are get getting calculated automatically which includes uh, the area and the curve at various points also the gm also the residual dynamic stability also the healing angle so everything is being clearly described over here if you are doing it manually it will take you ages but like i said if your lubricator is approved type and you're very much sure and you have uh, sweat in peace then definitely you will not bleed in war so that is what my um, intention is to tell you so be very much sure about your lubricator and be very much thorough with the uh, procedure of uh, using the grain stability booklet so that way you can really compare if you even if you can compare lights like about 50 percent of the values 
you will be there. You can use Loricator printout to fill up the values. Okay, so this is how the departure condition looks like. I will not discuss the arrival condition because again, it is the same. Okay, so now quickly go back to the NCB form and start filling it up.